Well, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. My co-host, Mr. Brody here. Well, he was here. Tried to bribe him again to try to... Try to co-host. He's hasn't been wanting to do any games lately, but anyway. Just four games left. The Red Sox still two games behind. The Red Sox keep winning, and unfortunately the Yankees keep winning too, so... Not much they can do about the Yankees. They just got to keep on trying to win. And hopefully the Yankees will slip up one of these games. Anyway, it's uh, Mike Torres on the hill for the Red Sox in the third and final game with the Tigers. They won an exciting game in yesterday's game. So if you haven't checked out game number 157, check that one out. That was a really, really good game. Um, so the Tigers are going to have... A guy who only lasted two seasons for the Tigers, or parts of two seasons, uh, and I forgot his first name here. We'll find it in a second. Kip Young. So Kip Young is going for the Detroit Tigers. So the Yan Yankees are active today, and Milwaukee is out of it now. So it's just a two-team race now. So without further ado, let's play some ball. I have Purple Monkey here. Mr. Brody should be joining us back in a second. Hopefully. Let's go. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. Alrighty, so Mike Torres on the hill for the Red Sox. He comes in with a 17-7 and record. One more win than in the actual season and a much better overall record than in the actual season. 3.03 earn run average, almost a full run less than his actual ERA of 3.96. 256 innings pitched, only 234 hits allowed. 82 walks and 130 strikeouts. So much better in his walk total and much better in his strikeout total. Well, a little bit better in his strikeout total. But he has surrendered three more home runs with 22 on the season. So for the defense behind Torres, it's going to be a Strems game left, Lynn in center, and Rice in right. And in the infield, it's going to be Brohammer at third, which has been in the last few games. Uh, much better defensively than Hobson. Of course, a, uh, my grandmother is probably a, <laughs> was probably a much better uh, third base defender than uh, than Hobson was. <laughs> anyway, uh, Burleson at short, Remy at second, and Scott at first, and Fist behind the plate. So that's the defense behind Torres. The Detroit lineup is Lou Whitaker, who homered in the last game. Actually, both of his home runs that he has on the season came against the Red Sox. In, the, in September. He'll bat first and play second. Phil Mankowski is the third baseman today, batting second. Rusty Staub, LeBron Durange, who homered twice in yesterday's game to tie the game up and send the game into extra innings, is the DH batting third. Batting cleanup is the first baseman, Jason Thompson. Steve Kemp is in left batting fifth. Melt May behind the plate will hit sixth. Oh, God. I'm going to mess this up, too. And, uh, Tim Cochran, the right fielder, bats seventh. Mickey Stanley, the center fielder, eighth. And Alan Trammell, the shortstop, will bat ninth. Keep wanting to add an extra L at the end of Trammell's, Trammell's name there. He only has one L at the end, two M's and one L. So that's the Detroit lineup against Torres. 
So, Ballhammer and Scott are playing in on the grass against Whitaker. Whitaker comes in hitting 301 with two homers and 46 runs batted in. Torres looks in for the sign from Fisk, nods his head, kicks and delivers. And it's a strikeout, so a good start for Torres and the Red Sox as Whitaker goes down on strikes. Next up, the third baseman Phil Mankowski comes in hitting 271, 12 homers and 36 runs batted in. Three times as many homers as he did in the actual season. Here's the pitch by Torres. And that's going to be a base hit past the right of Scott. As Rice throws it back in quickly. So one on and one down. Scott will hold on Mankowski at first. Brings up Rusty Staub. Hitting 261 with 25 homers, 93 runs batted in. One more home run than he did on the actual season. And it's going to be up to six column. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Lynn should handle this one. And he is able to get to that one. Not many center fielders would have got to that one. And makes the catch. So nice catch by Lynn. For out number two. So next up is Jason Thompson. Oh, Mankowski actually tagged and moved to second. Hmm. So anyway, Mankowski moves in the scoring position with two down now. Jason Thompson hitting 305 on the season, 28 homers, 98 runs bet in, two more homers and two more RBIs than on the actual season. It's going to be off the sixth column. And it's going to be another... High fly pop up drifting the foul ground. Nope, it's going to be foul. I was going to say another play into hit into center field. It is Mr. Brody. And this one a little bit easier for him. And he'll make the catch for out number three. So after one half, it's Detroit nothing, Boston coming up. Kip Young on the hill. He's got a record of five and six on the season, with six and seven on the actual season. But his ERA is not nearly as good with a 4.38 earned run average. 99 innings pitched, 109 hits allowed. 28 walks and 48 strikeouts, and has surrendered 15 home runs, six more than he did on the actual season. So the defense behind Young is going to be Kemp. Stanley and Cochran in the outfield. In the infield, it's going to be Mankowski, Trammell, Whitaker, and Thompson. And behind the plate, Milt May. Here's Mr. Brody as he's getting into the co-host seat. I knew he would come around sooner or later. I wanted to tell something to Purple Monkey there. So the lineup for the Red Sox is going to be Rick Wilson, the shortstop, will lead it off, followed by Jerry Remy, the second baseman, batting third and playing right. Jim Rice, batting cleanup, the captain, Kyle Yastrzemski. Carlin Fisk behind the plate will bat fifth. Center fielder, Fred Lynn, hits sixth. Butch Hobson again at DH, bats seventh. The boomer, George Scott, hits eighth. And Jack Brohammer at third base will bat ninth. So Burleson comes in hitting 276 with two homers and 45 runs batted in. Young looks in for the sign from May. Now, as I said, kicks and delivers. And it's going to be off the two column. He gets a good one to hit here, right in the wheelhouse. And the rooster is going to crow. And puts the Red Sox on the board as he hits one into the netting of the Green Monster. Just his third home run of the season. But it gets the Red Sox their early lead. So a leadoff home run for the rooster. The Red Sox lead at one nothing. So Jerry Remy up now. Remy hitting 294 with three homers and 43 runs bat in. It's going to be off the four column. And he'll pop this one up to his counterpart, Whitaker, at second. He's under it, still waiting, and clutches it for out number one. So Jim Rice up now. Hit his 50th home run in yesterday's ballgame. Actually hit two home runs in yesterday's ballgame. Now has 50 home runs for the season and 141 ribbies, breaking both those totals. 
just three points off of his average for the season at 312. 61 walks, 10 better than on the actual season. And 10 more strikeouts, 136, without a stolen base. So Young looks in for the sign from May. Kicks and delivers. And it's going to be off the one column. Gets one in the wheelhouse here. Can this be number 51? Going, 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 gone. This one over the netting of the green monster on to Lansdowne Street. So Jim Rice gets his 51st home run of the season, RBI number 142. And the Red Sox now lead it 2 to nothing. So that'll bring up Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski hitting 271 with 16 homers, 75 ribbies. It's going to be off the sixth column. That's going to be a fly ball to left. Kemp is there. Ranges to his right, reaches up, and makes the catch. So two down now for Fisk. Fisk hitting 285 on the season with 17 homers, 78 ribbies. And he'll ground this one to trim much short. Up with it over at Thompson. And that'll do it. But solo home runs by Burleson and Rice. Give the Red Sox the early 2-0 lead. After one. So Torres now with the lead. It'll be Kemp, May, and Cochran up for the Tigers. Kemp comes in any 264, 23 homers and 68 runs batted in. Eight more home runs than on the actual season. And that's going to be a line drive to Scott. Spears it for out number one. So that'll be at Milt May. Milt May hitting 223 with five homers, 25 ribbies. So up to six column. It's going to be a ground ball at the short range check for the rooster. And he'll get to this one. And make the throw over to Scott for out number two. So two up and two down in the Detroit second. That brings up Cochran. Cochran comes in hitting 322 in the season. With two homers and 36 runs batted in. Off the four call. And that's going to be a line drive to Remy. So Detroit goes in order in the second. And after one and a half, it's 2 nothing Boston. So Fred Lynn to lead it off for the Red Sox here in the home half of the second. Comes in hitting 291. 27 homers, five more than the actual season. And 91 RBIs, nine more than in the actual season. So off the four call. And that's going to be a fly ball off the center. Towering fly ball. Stanley sprints over and makes the catch for out number one. So that'll be a poor Chopson, 269 on the season. 16 homers, 65 ribbies. His next home run will tie his total for the season. And that will not happen this time as he grounds out the trammel for out number two. So two gone in the Red Sox second. Brings up the Boomer. 248 with 15 homers, 55 runs batted in. Gets one to hit here. And the Boomer goes yard. So the Boomer now hits 16 home runs on the season. And the Red Sox now lead at 3 to nothing. So three solo home runs. And the Red Sox have a 3 nothing lead. So Jack Brohammer up now. Jack Brohammer comes in hitting 248 with 24 runs batted in. In there mostly for his defense. Grounds this one to second. Whitaker over to Thompson. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the second. But the attack on another run on the solo home run by the Boomer is 16th of the season. And they now lead it 3-0 after two. So Mickey Stanley up now. Mickey Stanley hitting 309 on the season with two homers and 10 runs batted in. Veteran steps in, ready to grip and rip. Torres kicks and delivers. And he'll strike out swing. So Torres gets his second K of the day. Stanley goes down on strikes. So that'll bring up Alan Trammell, the number nine hitter. 265 with 29 ribbies. Off the four column. That's going to be a ground ball to Brohammer. Range check on him. 
he'll get to it. Long throw to Scott and gets him by a step. So two down now in the Detroit third. We'll bring up the top of the order, Whitaker. Strike up victim his first time up. Gets one to hit here. That's going to be a base hit. To right. Just past Remy. So two out base runner for the Tigers. Brings up Phil Mankowski. Mankowski singled off Torres his first step at. Whitaker trying to get a lead here. Fastball in the dirt. Blocked by Fisk. And here he goes. And we're going to hold on to it. Not much Fisk could do with that one other than block it. So runner in scoring position now. Mankowski back in the box. Gets one to hit here. And Mankowski thought that one was low, but it's called for strike three. Argues a bit, but to no avail. So after two and a half, it remains Boston three and Detroit nothing. So Burleson led the game off with a home run, his third of the season. Comes to the plate now. Here's the windup in the pitch by Young. It's a ground ball to Whitaker. Takes it on a second hop, fires to first, and beats him by a couple of steps. So let's check out some scores here. Cleveland and Baltimore tied at one. Ugh. The Yankees continue to roll, now up six to nothing over Toronto. Toronto's not Helping us out a bit here. California on top of Chicago, 4-2. And Texas and Seattle are scoreless. So Alrighty, so Jerry Remy up to the plate now. Corners Mankowski and Thompson playing in. One gone in the Red Sox third. Here's the windup in the pitch. Remy popped out in his first at bat. It's going to be a range check on Trammell. He'll get to it. And throw Remy out for out number two. So two gone in the Red Sox third. So we have Jim Rice hit his 51st home run his first time up. Could he go back to back here? Back to back plate appearances. And this one's going, 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 and gone. Just over the wall, this one. Not quite as far as the other one. But a home run nonetheless. And Jim Rice gets his second home run. So back-to-back -back games with two homers. And the Red Sox now lead up 4 to nothing. Home run number 52 for Jim Ed Rice. Pouring it on the last week of the season here. So Yastrzemski up now, flew out in his first at bat. Can they go back to back, Yastrzemski? Nope, he'll get a single though. So Yastrzemski's on with a two out single. So it'll be at Fisk. It's gonna be off the four column and that will be a range check on his counterpart, Milt May. It's going to be a pop-up. They should have this one. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. But Jim Rice gets his second solo home run of the game. Home run number 52. And the Red Sox increased the lead now 4 nothing. So Rusty Staub up now. Flew out in his first at-bat. This will be a ground ball to Remdog. He'll get to it rather easily. Over to Scott for out number one. Saturday, so Thompson flew out in his first at bat. And he'll strike out swing on the curve. Two up and two down, the Detroit fourth. Torres rolling along. Steve Kemp lined out in his first at bat. Stein will draw the walk. First walk given up by Torres today. So two outs. 
And a runner on first for Milt May, who grounded out in his first at bat. He'll go round out to Scott. High Hopper takes to the bag himself. And that'll end the inning in the top of the fourth. So after three and a half, it's four nothing Red Sox. So May back out there again. And can Lynn go deep? This one's going to go deep, deep, deep. But no, Cochran makes the catch on the warning track. So one gone in the Red Sox fourth. Brings up Hobson who grounded out his first at bat. This time he'll get a base hit up the middle. So one out base runner. For the Red Sox, brings up the Boomer. He homered in his only at bat so far today, his 16th of the season. Lines this one sharply to Trammell. Makes the catch for out number two. So Brohammer grounded out in his first at bat. We'll pop this one up to Whitaker. Calls for it and puts it away for the final out of the fourth. So the first inning, the Red Sox do, don't score. After four, it remains 4 nothing Boston. So bottom third of the order against Torres here in the top of the fifth. Cocker and Stanley and Trammell. And Cochran will pop this one up to Remy. And he'll make the catch for out number one. So Mickey Stanley, a strikeout victim, his first at bat. Gets a hold of this one and drives it through the hole. So Stanley is on with a one-out single. And we have Trammell grounded out in his first at bat. And that's a fly ball to center. And Lynn will make the catch for the second out of the inning. So let's check out the Yankee score. Still 6 nothing Yankees. Uh, Ron Guidry on the hill. So it's going to be tough for Toronto to come back against Guidry, but you never know. So Whitaker up now. He's one for two on the day. Two outs and a runner on first. So wind up in the pitch. And Whitaker will get his second hit of the day. And Stanley holds at second. So first and second with one down. Sorry, with two down. Brings up Phil Mankowski. One for two on the day. And that's going to be a fly ball to right. Backing up just a bit is Rice. And he'll pull it in for out number three. So halfway through, it's Red Sox shutting out the Tigers. Four to nothing. Red Sox will send the top of the order. Burleson, Remy, and Rice up against Young. Young, 75 pitches through four innings. And that would be a call third strike, his first strikeout of the day. So Jerry Remy over two, looking for his first hit. And there goes Miss Mags. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Stanley on the run. Calls it in for out number two. So Jim Rice up now. He's been up twice and he's got two solo home runs. Numbers 51 and 52 on the season. And RBI is number 142 and 143. And that's going to be up to six column. And that's going to be a called. No, Rice swings over it. Trying to go for home run number three, but misses it. And Rice is retired for the first time today. So after 5-4, it remains 4 nothing Boston. So it'll be Staub, Thompson, and Kemp up for the Bengals. Staub 0 for 2 on the day. And make that 0 for 3 as he'll fly out to Rice for out number 1. So, Tom, so if the scores remain like they are right now, the Red Sox will be still down by 2 with just 3 games to play. So they'll need more and more of a miracle if they're going to pull this off. But stranger things have happened. So Thompson up now 0 for 2. 
That is going to be a range check on Fisk. It's going to be a pop-up. Fisk is under it and makes the catch for out number two. Thompson is now 0 for 3. So this brings up Steve Kemp. Lined out in the first, second and walked in the fourth. And he will fly out to Rice in the sixth. So after five and a half. Boston four. And Detroit nada. Stramski will lead it off for the Red Sox here in the top of the uh, bottom of the sixth. Shemsky's one for two with a single. Lines this one sharply to Whitaker. Makes the catch, though, for out number one. That'll bring up Fisk, rounded out in the first, and she popped out in the third. And that's a fly ball to right, opposite field. Cochran drifts over under it and makes the catch. So two quick outs in the Red Sox seventh. Mr. Brody, Purple Dinosaur, Miss Mags. Have the uh, trivia question ready. That's what Miss Mags was running across with. So Fred Lynn up now. He's flied out twice today. And lines out to Whitaker. Nice catch by Whitaker. The Red Sox go 1, 2, 3 in the 6th. So we head to the top of the 7th. Torres back out there. Torres 78 pitches through 6 innings. Mays grounded out twice. We'll lead it off. And May gets a hold of one here. This one is going deep over the head of Lynn. Goes all the way to the wall. And May will be in there with a double. So leadoff double for the catcher. Cochran 0 for 2 on the day. May gets his lead. Torres working out of the stretch. Kicks back the runner. Kicks and delivers. And that's going to be hit to Remy. Check swing. Soft liner to Remy, and he'll make the catch as May dives back to the bag. So Cleveland and Baltimore tied at three. Yankees now 7 nothing over to Toronto. Chicago leads California 7-5. to And Seattle on top of Texas 5-3. to So I think Toronto, uh, California is just about out of it, especially if they lose today. I think I think Kansas City's magic number was one, I believe, start coming into today. So if California loses today, they will be eliminated, and Kansas City will be the National League West champions. As exactly what happened in the actual season, I believe. I'm pretty sure. I think it was the Yankees played the uh, Royals in the playoffs. So Mickey Stanley up now, one for two on the day, one gone in the seventh. And he'll pop this one up to Remy. Easy catch for out number two. So Thompson up, I mean Trammel, Trammel up now for two. And that's a strikeout swing, so fifth K of the day for Torres. And seventh inning stretch time here in Boston. Here's the trivia question. So what company manufactures Louisville Slugger bats? Is it Adirondack? I don't think it's Spalding. I want to go with Adirondack. That's just who I think it might be. So anyway, what company manufactures Louisville bats? Lock in your answers. Here we go. The Higher Rick and Bradsby Company. Located in Louisville, Kentucky. I would have never guessed that one. Hill, Hillerich and Bradsby Company. That was a tough one. Digging deep for that one. So we head to the home half of the seventh with the Red Sox shutting out the Tigers 4 to nothing. Unfortunately, the Yankees are also shutting out the Blue Jays 7 to nothing. Behind Ron Guidry. So Hobson, singled in his last at bat, 1 for 2 on the day. We'll lead it off. Kip Young still out there after 97 pitches through six innings. And swing and a miss for strike three. Third strikeout of the day for Young. So the Boomer, one for two with a solo homer back in the second. Hits this one discounted apart. Thompson, it's going to be a range check on Thompson. 
He'll get to it. And Thompson the Young covering first for out number two. So Jack Rohammer up now for two on the day. Rohammer gets his pitch here right in the wheelhouse and lays off of it. Ends up being low out of the strike zone. And Bohammer's on with the first time today with a two-out walk. Now what the heck? We'll try a still. Let's see if see if we can get a stall on base here. He's got a seventy percent chance here. Hey, Miss Mags. And looks like he's. Oh, Bohammer is out. Bohammer goes a little too far off the bag. And Young throws him out. Oh, actually, that no, was a stolen base. Just didn't didn't do the normal roll. So Brohammer is caught stealing to end the seventh. So we'll head to the eighth. Torres back out there. Top of the order, Whitaker, Mankowski, and Staub up against Torres here in the seventh. So, sorry, in the top of the eighth. Whitaker two for three on the day, a pair of singles. And he'll fly out to Linden Center for out number one. So one gone in the Tiger eighth. Brings up Mankowski, one for three on the day, singled back in the first. Grounds this one to Remy. Grabs it, throws the first for out number two. Alright, so that'll bring up LeGrand Duran. She's flown out twice and grounded out. And this time he'll line out to Remy. So after two home runs yesterday, Staub will end the day most likely with an 0 for 4. So Rick Burleson will lead it off of the Red Sox here in the bottom of the 8th. He homered back in the first, 1 for 3 on the day. And it grounds this one to Mankowski at third, one hopper. Over to first. One gone in the Red Sox eighth. So Jerry Remy up now. 0 for 3 on the day. Grounds this one the first. Thompson grabs it. Races the first. And beats Remy for out number two. So Jim Rice. Pair of home runs today. Pair of solo home runs. Can he get his third home run of the day? Let's see. And yes. Jim Rice. Going, 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 gone. Number 53 of the season. A three-homer day. Three solo home runs for Jim Ed Rice. So Jim Rice should be running away with the AL MVP, as he did in the actual season. We'll see. I'm not sure if anybody's even close to him for that. But he's definitely, uh, he's already has, he has seven more home runs with three more games to go than he did on the actual season, so having a torrid last week of the season here. Now has five home runs in the last two games. So if nothing else, Rice is putting on a show for us. So Yastrzemski up now, one for three. I'm sure he'd trade those home runs for a division champion, uh, division uh, championship, division win. So you strength scam now, one for three on the day. Division crown, I should say. And Koski scoops it up, fires the first for out number three. So we head to the ninth. Tor is back out there. Zim, Zim is going to let him try to finish it out here. There is no action in the Red Sox pen. He's allowed only five hits and just one walk, striking out five. So Thompson up to the plate now, 0 for three on the day. And that's going to be hit to center. Lynn going back on his horse, carrying to the wall, jumps. It's off the wall. Thompson is around second, but he'll stay there, down by four. So Thompson's on with a double, his first hit of the day. Fisk goes out the top to Torres, goes back behind the plate. Probably told him not to pay any attention to the runner, just to pay attention to the man at the plate. So Kemp up now, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. And he'll walk. 
So the first two runners on for the Tigers. There is some stretching in the Red Sox pen. Torres trying to complete it. So Milt May up now. Doubled off Torres' last time up. One for three on the day. Oh my goodness. And he'll get one to hit here. Lines this one to right to Scott though. Runners get back safely. So one gone in the top of the ninth. That'll be up Cochran. He's 0 for 3. And hits this one to left field. Dostremski has a beat on it. Gets under just a bit. Dostremski started back. Comes in. And makes the can of corn catch for out number 2. So the Tigers down to the last out. The veteran Mickey Stanley up now. 1 for 3 on the day. Torres looks in for the sign from Fisk. Looks at the runners. Fenway Faithful are up and cheering. And <laughs> all that. And they're going to call in a pinch hitter, Dave Stegman. 250 and 16 at-bats. Wolf for 16 with an RBI. And here we go. Do it again. And that's going to be a pop-up. This should do it. Burleson under it. Calls for it. Calls everyone off. Makes the catch. And that'll do it. As the Red Sox win 5 to nothing, So hitting star of the day definitely was Jim Rice. MVP of the day. I don't know. It's going to be tough. I think we got to give it to Rice today though. Even though Torres pitched the... We'll give him co. Co-players of the game to Torres who pitched the shutout. And Rice with his three home runs. So let's check out the box score. Hopefully the Blue Jays pulled off a miracle and beat the Yankees. We'll see, though. So Mike Torres gets the win, 18-7 and seven now. Nine innings pitch, just six hits allowed. Two walks and five strikeouts, no earned runs, a shutout. So Kip Young goes the distance, too. Pitches eight innings, allows seven hits, five runs. All of them earned, one walk, three strikeouts, and Five solo home runs for the Red Sox. Three by Rice, one by Burleson, and one by Scott. So the Red Sox put on a fireworks display today. So for the Red Sox, Rick Burleson won for four with a solo home run. Jerry Remy was 0 for four. Jim Rice was three for four with three solo homers. Yastrzemski won for four. Fisk 0 for three, as was Lynn. Hobson won for three. Scott, 1 for 3 with a solo homer. And Brohammer, 0 for 2 with a walk, I believe. So, for the Tigers, manage just 6 hits off Torres. Whitaker, 2 for 4 on the day. Mankowski, 1 for 4. Staub and Thompson, both 0 for... Oh, no, Staub, 0 for 4. Thompson, 1 for 4. Kemp, 0 for 2. May, 1 for 4. Cochran, 0 for 4. Stanley, 1 for 3. Stegman, as a pinch hitter, was 1 for 3. I mean, I mean like, yeah, right. It was 0 for 1. And Alan Trim will 0 for 3 on the day. So let's hurry it up and get to the score. And hopefully Toronto pulled off a miracle here. If not, the Red Sox will be two games out. We'll see. Red Sox need a miracle here. And, oh, it's still a two-game lead. So the magic number is two. So the Yankees uh, win today big. So the Yankees have won two in a row now. The Red Sox have won seven in a row. So the Red Sox are doing exactly what they did at the end of the season. Winning uh, with a long winning streak. Now seven in a row. But it doesn't do them any good if the Yankees don't if the Yankees don't lose a couple here. So the Red Sox need the Yankees to win the next two out of to lose the next two out of three to force and the Red Sox need to sweep the last three to force that playoff. Be nice if the Yankees could get swept in the last three. But we'll see. Good news is that the Yankees aren't playing the Blue Jays anymore, so let's take a look at the matchups with just three games to go. For both teams. Red Sox one game ahead of their of their record. The Yankees two games ahead of their record. So let's check tomorrow's games for, for Friday, Friday, September 29th. Final weekend of the season. Final series 
of the Red Sox. Oh, the Red Sox, thankfully, are going to play the Blue Jays. They can beat up on them. In the actual game, they beat them 11 to nothing. Wow, the Red Sox did not homer in that game either. So the Red Sox are going to send... Oh, no. <laughs> well, he had a good outing his last outing. Pitched a complete game. Bob Stanley, Steamer Stanley, is slated to pitch. Pitched seven innings and just two hit balls. So hopefully you can do well again with Drago pitching the last two innings against Jim, Jim Clancy. The Red Sox pretty much had their way with Clancy in that last time. Hopefully they will this time. So they have... I'm just going to check the final three matchups, uh, pitching matchups. So it's going to be Stanley against Clancy in the opener. And then on Saturday, the 30th, it's going to be Dennis Eckersley. Good news for the Red Sox. He pitched a complete game. Red Sox won, would win 3-1. to one. No, sorry, 5-1. to one. So, Eckersley against Jefferson. And then in the finale on Sunday, hopefully that it will have a be a meaningful game. The Red Sox also shut out the Blue Jays 5 to nothing. Wow. And it's Louis Tiant against Don Kirkwood. So, good matchups there for the Red Sox. Let's see who the Yankees are playing over the weekend in their pitching matchups. So just three games to go, and the Red Sox still down by two. So let's check out the Yankees' last three games here. So the Yankees are playing the Cleveland Indians. Unfortunately, we're not very good. Let me get the... Uh, Ad to go out. The ad right now is in front of the Yankee score, so I can't click on it. <sighs> Hold on, you have to try to reload baseball reference here. It's an eBay ad right in front of the Yankee score here. Here we go. Here we go. So the Yankees would beat the Cleveland Indians on Friday, Friday night, three to one. It's going to be Jim Beatty. Okay, they have a shot. Jim Beatty against David Clyde. Come on, David Clyde for the Indians. Uh, and then Saturday's matchup is going to be the Yankees would win that one 7 to nothing. It's going to be Ed Figueroa, who is having an excellent season. Definitely a better one, even a better one than Guidry in the replay against Mike Paxton. So the ex-Red Sox and Rick Wise pitched in that game too. So if the ex-Red Sox pitchers can... Help out the Red Sox there. That would be awesome. Mike Paxton in the actual in the actual game did not even record an out before allowing five hits and five runs. Home run to Jackson. No, actually it wasn't the Jackson. There weren't any home runs. That was off of Wise later on. So they were the Yankees would win that one, and then finally on the finale on Sunday, I think this is the one the Yankees lost. Yes, Cleveland would beat the Yankees nine to two. The Red Sox would win because they wouldn't came into the day just a game behind the Yankees. So that's going to be Sunday, October first. It's going to it was Catfish Hunter against Rick Waits of the Indians. So we have an exciting final weekend. Last three games of the season. Red Sox still down by two. So the Red Sox need the Yankees to lose at least two of these games, and the Red Sox sweep the series. So the Red Sox. The only way the Red Sox can afford to lose one game is if the Yankees get swept by Cleveland, and I can't, I don't see that happening. So the Red Sox have to pretty much win out and hope the Yankees can lose two out of three in Cleveland. So they'll need a miracle, but stranger things have happened. So exciting last three games here. Definitely an awesome series. Uh, having a lot of fun playing this, especially the last couple of weeks here. So it's just as it, Bringing back memories from the actual season. Hopefully, uh, so there is still a possibility the Red Sox and the Yankees could be could go down in the one-game playoff again. Wouldn't that be something? Well, anyway, that is it for today. Game number 149. 
So we'll be back with game number 150, most likely tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. So take care. God bless. And there's Miss Mags. Miss Mags, Mr. Brody, and Purple Monkey there. We'll be back with some more action. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.